Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bahalava Kirivare Rani Gopi Jana Bahalava Kirivare Rani Yashore Nanana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashore Nanana Braja Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Banachani Jamuna Tira Banachani Jayura Damadava Kundabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunda Bihari Kopi Jana Bahalava Girvade Rani Kopi Jana Bahalava Girvade Rani Yashura Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashura Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana Jari Yamuna Tiravana Jari Jaya Raja Madhava Kundabi Hari Jaya Raja Madhava Kundabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunya Bihari Jaya Om Vishnu Pad Parnam Aham Zabri Viraji Kacharya Asto Dharasatya Shri Shri Madhis Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vinanta Swami Shiro Prabhupada Kijan Jaya Om Vishnu Pad Parnam Aham Zabri Viraji Kacharya Asto Dharasatya Shri Shri Madhis Divine Grace Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada Kijai Shri Radha Krishna Kijai Shri Radha Shama Sunni Kijai Miskan Naperville Yatra Kijai New Parking Lot Kijai Holy Janmasmi Festival Kijai Radhastami Festival Kijai Gora Premanandi All Glories to the Assembled Devotees All Glories to the Assembled Devotees All Glories to the Assembled Devotees all glories, all glories, Shri Shri Guru and Guranga Shri Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.
Hi Krishna. <coughs> so it's nice to be back in Naperville Dam with all the devotees. Uh, I was thinking <coughs> this is truly an expression of American Vaishnavism, all of you living here in America, because just like the culture out loud, at large, first you build the parking lot, then you build everything else. Right? So now that you've made nice arrangements for all of your cars, please keep going, don't stop. <coughs> Make sure that the deity also has a nice place, right? It's good that we did this first. Sometimes that's necessary to do. But don't stop now. Keep going. Okay. And it looks like some of the decorations left from Janmashtami. Yeah, I had a nice celebration. How many people do we get here? Four to five thousand. Yeah, that's a lot of people to fit in this room. I'm very expert in engineering. That's good. Yeah, I think uh, many places in the world, this guy's very famous for John Mastami. As I know, uh, <coughs> in Washington, D.C., there's a lot of different temples. I know here in Chicago, too. But I think people people that want to experience John Mastami, they know, let's go to Iskon, because they know here we really revere Krishna very deeply in our hearts. And they know it's not just some type of ritual, but actually there's some real devotion to the Lord here. Not to minimize what others do, but people know that particularly who come here, it's not just another holiday, it's a celebration of the advent of the Supreme Lord. And people, they feel that and they're inspired by that. So it's very nice, you know, 4,000 people, that's great. <coughs> you might need a bigger parking lot. What do we do, we shuttle everybody, yeah? You get parking lots nearby? Is that we do rent buses, we do that? For the cars? Don't we don't do that. They all fit here? Nearby. Okay, so we don't have to get a shuttle service. No bus. Mm hmm Of course, responses on Facebook can be misleading. Oh, good. Uh-huh. Yeah, we trick everybody because we have a different calendar. So they come twice, right? It's proper, it's, you know, special, special arrangement. That was very nice. I was also thinking, too, it's very nice here to see I was at uh, this conference, so I mentioned that a minute or two, but... One of the things they were talking about, they had one whole session on empowering ladies. So I was thinking this temple is way ahead of everybody because all the ladies have the higher seats over here and all the, all the men are on the floor. So it's very good to see we've taken up that spirit of empowering the women in the Naperville temple. It's good. So <coughs> a very a great honor to be here again. I was here as, as a Premananda Mataji mentioned, there's this uh, conference was here this weekend. The World Hindu Congress, the second one. So there's about 2,500 people, 60 different countries. And this afternoon, the Vice President of India spoke. And uh, ISKCON, actually, I, I, I have in my bag, I should have brought in, ISKCON was given an award among four organizations, and particularly for our work carrying out Prabhupada's mission of distributing the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita all around the world. So they specifically recognized Srila Prabhupada and his ISKCON society in, in that. So that was the first day. That was nice. And then quite a few devotees uh, spoke, ISKCON devotees spoke. And uh, one of the devotees that spoke was Balabhadra Prabhu, who was the uh, uh, president of our temple in Baltimore. He actually, he's living now in, um, not Baltimore, excuse me, Philadelphia. He, li he lives in Atlanta, but spends a lot of time in Baltimore. And he read a very nice verse that I was inspired to hear him talk about. So I thought I'd read that same uh, verse here today, which is in the, in the, in the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, very first chapter, the fourth text, chapters entitled Questions by the Sages. So I'll read the text and then I'll read some of the purport and discuss it a little bit. So that's the plan. It's okay? Good plan? <coughs> so do the invocation. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <coughs> so I'll just read the, the text. You can just listen to the text. Naimishe Nimisha Chetre Rishaya Shonako Dayaha Satram Svargaya Lokaya Sahasra Samam Asata Translation Once in a holy place in the forest of Naimisharanya <coughs> great sages headed by the great sage Shonaka assembled to perform a great thousand year sacrifice for the satisfaction of the Lord and his devotees. <coughs> Purport by his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. The prelude of the Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken in the previous three shlokas. Now the main topic of this great literature is being presented. The devotees of Lord Vishnu offer all kinds of sacrifices for his pleasure. The devotees are always attached to the service of the Lord, whereas the forgetful or fallen souls are attached to the pleasures of material existence. In the Bhagavad Gita is said that anything performed in the material world for any reason other than the pleasure of Lord Vishnu causes further bondage for the performer. It is enjoined, therefore, that all acts must be performed sacrificially for the satisfaction of Vishnu and his devotees. This will bring everyone peace and prosperity. The great sages are always anxious to, good, to do good for the people in general. And as such, the sages headed by Shonaka and others assembled at this holy place of Naimasharanya with a program of performing a great continuous chain of sacrificial ceremonies. Forgetful men do not know the right path for peace and prosperity. However, the sages know it well and therefore, for the good of all men, they are always anxious to perform acts which may bring about peace in the world. They are sincere friends to all living entities, and at the risk of great personal inconvenience, they are always engaged in the service of the Lord for the good of all people. Lord Vishnu, or Krishna, is just like a great tree, and all others, including the demigods, men, siddhas, charnas, vijanaragas, and other living entities are like branches, twigs, and leaves of that tree. By pouring water in the root of the tree, all the parts of the tree are automatically nourished. Only those branches and leaves which are detached cannot be so satisfied. Similarly, human society, when it is detached from the personality of Godhead, like a detached branches and leaves, is not able of being watered, and one attempting to do so is simply wasting his energy and resources. In this age, the congregational chant in the holy name to the Lord is the prescribed method. Oh, excuse me, this one. The modern materialistic society is detached from its relation to the Supreme Lord, and all its plans, which are made by atheistic leaders, are sure to be baffled at every step. Yet they do not wake up to this. In this age, the congregational chanting of the holy names of the Lord is the prescribed method for waking up. The ways and means are most scientifically presented by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and intelligent persons may take advantage of his teachings in order to bring about real peace and prosperity. Srimad Bhagavatam is, all present, is also presented for the same purpose. Namo Vishnu Paraya Krishna Bhastaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vinata Samanita Namo Namaste Saraswati Deva Gauravani Pichani Nirvasesha Shimivan Pashtata Vastana Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunitya Nanda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasana Gaur Bhakti Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare so just a few thoughts on this verse here. It's a beautiful introduction to the whole Bhagavatam. <coughs> so here it's explaining that the sages in Naimasharanya, they assembled together to perform a great sacrifice for the satisfaction of the Lord and his devotees. And in the Purport Prabhupada says, the great sages are always anxious to do good to people in general. And as such, the sages 
came together in Namasharanya to help the people in general. So also in the Bhagavad Gita it explains the same idea of performing sacrifices. In the third chapter, <coughs> Krishna says that uh, by performing uh, sacrifices, uh, that we, we must perform sacrifices, and if we don't perform sacrifices, those become a source of bondage for us. Now in the modern world, the idea of sacrifice is not like real popular. You know, you hear sacrifice, you kind of think of like human sacrifice or something, you know, kind of strange. It's not a word that's used a lot. You know, if you go to the, if you go to the office and the boss says, I need you to sacrifice more. You call up the HR department and say, hey, I, we have a problem here. Something's wrong. <laughs> you, know, I think you better get up here quicker. You're going to be in a lawsuit really fast because he's not asking what he's allowed to ask. But the language is a little different, but actually um, it's described to the sages they are going to perform a sacrifice. They want to do something, some activity together to please the divinity, to please God, please Krishna, and do what's good for all of the devotees of Krishna and what's good for people in general. That's to describe it. They want to do something. That's the broader meaning of what it means uh, to do a sacrifice in the right way. And if we think about it, again, the words are a little unusual for us, sacrifice. It's not used so often. But if you think about it, today's Sunday, right? It's uh, 6 o'clock. So raise your hand if you're going either to work or school or perform some other duties tomorrow. Raise your hand. Okay, that's a lot of you. So you have about 14 hours before the sacrifice begins. <laughs> Isn't it? When the alarm goes off in the morning and says, okay, time to get up and get ready and get dressed and jump out the middle of the highway with so many cars going too many places at the same time sit in traffic right and that's a sacrifice because your mind what's your mind usually tell you it says okay roll over I don't want to go today you know can't be can't today be Sunday or can't today be Saturday I don't want to go so that's a sacrifice so we all make that that's a sacrifice of our time we're taking our time that we could do so many things and we're using it for another purpose. We're sacrificing. <coughs> and uh, in that case, mo you, mostly, you know, we, we do that because we need to make money. Yeah, that's the main. So we say, okay, I'm going to give up some of my time. Why? To get money in exchange, right? We all know. There may be a few of you that you have a really wonderful job and you're independently wealthy and you don't need to go to work, but you do just... But for most of us, there's something we need to get some money back. Now, when you get your money back, let's say you just pick a number. Let's say just a round number. You, you're making $100 an hour, just a round number. And you work 40 hours. So 100 times 40, you should get a check for $4,000, right? Is that what you get? No. Why? Because you're sacrificing. Yeah. Because you have to make a sacrifice, right? 7.5% for this, 7.5% for this, depending on your bracket, somewhere between, I don't know what it is, 15% up to 40, whatever it is these days, right? <clears throat> so that's the sacrifice. Why? So you're sacrificing a percentage of your paycheck for, for, for taxes. And we all know, because if you don't pay your taxes, they don't build roads for us, right? And they don't have police to make sure people follow the speed limits, and they don't have, uh, you know, so many different things that are there there to help us they don't have a the water doesn't drain it rains and all of a sudden you can't drive because there's a three-foot flood so you pay taxes so they make sure there's systems to take the water away isn't it and if there's a car accident there's systems in place they have ambulances that are there etc so many things that we're sacrificing for and um, then we all know when you when you when you come home from work uh, let's say whatever you're left with whatever it is whatever percentage after you sacrifice your paycheck then you come home the husband or wife and, and then and then what happens to the money you get to put it in your pocket and spend it on whatever you want no you have to sit down and what do you have to do you have once a month now these days it's most of it's done electronically but unless you've bought your house a long time ago right like usually 30 years ago right then they you have to they take some more out for what you make another sacrifice what so you have a roof over your head, a place to cook your meal, and a place to lay down. So that's the sacrifice, right? Et cetera, et cetera. 
And then what's left, your kids say, Mom, can, I, can you take me to the mall? And I need a little money. Can you help me out? So when all is said and done, you may not have too much left. But that's, those are sacrifices that we make. Um, and even if you, the children, you know, they make a sacrifice too. They're, they're sacrificing, or, or young people. They sacrifice their time, their different desires they may have, to go to school in exchange for an education, in exchange for a better future. So in each of these different types of sacrifice, we're giving up something. We may be thinking about it or may not be thinking about it. But consciously or unconsciously, we're giving up one thing to get something else. Isn't it? So people then think, I'm not sacrificing. I just do whatever I want. No, that's not true. They're, they're those people as described here, they're, they're not awake. An awake person realizes that I'm always performing some kind of sacrifice. And as described here, the great men and women, this, the sages... They sacrifice, particularly the example of Namasharanya, for what purpose? Is it to get a car or to get a house? What are they sacrificing for? To do good for the people in general. Isn't it? It's described, that's what they're trying to do. So what is that? It's explained here. They're trying to promote and teach, specifically Prabhupada uses these terms, the path of peace and prosperity. So they're trying to figure out what can I do to get peace and prosperity for, for ourselves and for others. Why, Prabhupada explains in the purport, also because they're sincere friends to all. Just like a mother and father, they're sacrificing for the spouse, they're sacrificing for the kids, they're sacrificing for the, sometimes the parents, so many things. Why? Because they're sincere friends, well-wishers, they, to, to, to those members of the human family that they see as part of their family. He described here that the great sages, they see everyone as part of the broader family and therefore they want to perform a sacrifice to help everybody so that's the that's the wonder and therefore Prabhupada is explaining that they are giving their lives and dedicating their time into serving the Lord and to helping others connect with the Lord understanding that that is ultimately the source of pleasure just like we go to work we make money we bring it home to have, have a house you know for our wife or husband, children like that. We, we do so many things to make sure we can provide clothing and education, all those things. And those are all important things to sacrifice for. But the Bhagavatam is revealing this important information that in the process of doing our daily sacrifices we should be attentive to that others and perhaps us can be performing this great sacrifice of actually uh, helping uh, people on the highest level. And specifically, it's mentioned here, Prabhupada talks about chanting and about uh, the practice of bhakti yoga. Now, why is that considered particularly important? He also gives the idea here, because it helps people wake up. And according to the Shastra, people are basically walking around asleep. Now, how is it asleep? Just like Prabhupada mentions many times that, that it's in the Shastra that when a person, when we lay down at night, we go to sleep, oftentimes we dream, right? Some of us dream a lot, some of us not so much. But all of us dream sometimes. So you may dream, you know, you're back with your mother in Mumbai, or you're skiing with your high school friend in Colorado, or you're, you know, you're the superstar of the baseball team and everybody's cheering you, and just as you're about to hit a home run and win the game, you wake up, right? Or you're playing, you know, somebody gave you a lottery ticket and it's worth a million dollars and you're just about to go hand it in and the wind blows it out of your hands and you wake up all distraught. Ah! You see? Or probably gives the example, he says too, sometimes like you, he specifically says, if sometimes you dream you see a tiger. And sometimes we have dreams like that and you wake up all in a panic. I had a, it happened to me just the other day, I was someplace, oh I know, I came home really tired. I was out someplace and I just thought, okay, I'll close my eyes. Actually, I was driving and I pulled over to rest stop and I turned off the car and I just closed my eyes for 10 minutes. But I forgot everything. And then I kind of woke up. Forget, I'd forgotten that I'd pulled over. So I woke up like, oh, I'm driving. Like there's a steering wheel in front of me. Like I'm, I'm you know, and it was like, oh, I'm okay. I'm in, a, I'm in a parking lot, you know. It wasn't a peaceful parking lot like this. It was a matter so we so we dream when we dream at night it's explained in the Shasta that our gross body stays in one place the subtle body goes someplace else 
And we have all these different kind of experiences. And then we come back. When we wake up, we come back to the subtle, to the reconnect the subtle body and the gross body. We have all these different experiences, but they're not real. Because they're not connected to who we were. So you wake up in the morning, okay, that was just a dream. But according to the transcendentalists, what we do during the waking hours, so-called, is also similar to a dream. Because we're not actually understanding the soul that is even there, even more subtle. That's there within the body. So we're having so many different experiences. <coughs> but someday we wake up. If at no other time, at the time of death, the, the gross body dies, the soul moves on, and then we're in a completely different situation. So, therefore, we're advised, and the sages and I'm assuring you're trying to help people to, to wake up uh, to understanding that instead of, like in the dream, you, sometimes you have a dream, and you, you find yourself working hard trying to do a lot of things in the dream to be happy. You know, maybe you, maybe you dream you're like you're running around, you're trying to go to the grocery store and cook something special for your kids, and this happens, that happens. Then you wake up, it's like, oh, I have to get up and cook real breakfast. Isn't it? That wasn't the real breakfast. But you go through the whole emotions of the whole thing because we identify with it. <coughs> so the same way is described that in this life we're performing so many activities, performing so many sacrifices without thinking about it so much, thinking that those things will get us what we really want in our heart, which is peace and prosperity and a sense of fulfillment and spiritual happiness. Ultimately, we may not know, we may not use the word spiritual happiness, but <clears throat> we're looking for those things. But the Shastras explains that to experience real pleasure, real satisfaction in what we're doing, we need to perform in a relationship with the divine, we're spiritual beings, we're small parts and parcels connected to Krishna, but we've forgotten that. Just like when you have a dream, you forget who you are. You know, you're John or you're Nita or you're Raj or you're Philip, and you, you go someplace else and you have all these different imaginations of who I am in the dream, but then in the morning you wake up, oh, I thought I was a race car driver, but no, I actually, I'm an IT professional and I have to go to work. Isn't it? So all of that was just a big dream. So this is the knowledge given in the Shastra that actually what we're doing now, you know, I'm an American, I'm Indian, I'm a mother, I'm a father, I'm young, I'm old, I'm white, I'm black, I'm brown, I have a PhD, I dropped out of college, I'm rich, I'm poor. These are all things that <coughs> we're temporarily going through and observing. They're real. The Vaishnavs say they're real, but they're temporary. It's not like tomorrow you don't have to go to work. Please, don't anybody misquote me. Please go to work, be a good employee, bring back the money, pay your taxes, feed the kids, do all those things. Don't, don't stop that. That's not the point. But the idea is that in the ultimate sense, it's illusory because it's not really who we are. And sometimes people think that this is all, this is me, and they give their whole lives to those things without asking the deeper question of who am I beyond this temporary body. And what's wonderful, what's being described here, is that when people actually understand that spiritual connection, then we have the opportunity, everyone has the opportunity to experience some, some real satisfaction by connecting with Krishna, by connecting with other living beings in a spiritual way. We, and by sacrificing for those purposes, we experience a level of contentment and satisfaction that is far beyond the troublesome nature of this world we become more peaceful, we become more satisfied, and we start also seeing other people not as objects to be exploited. You know, this world today especially has become so competitive, you know, and even like, you know, between countries and between nations and between cities and, you know, and the, the, again, I live in Washington, the political discourse on both sides now, it's, it's, it's nastier than I've ever seen it. Everybody's like, you're the bad guy. No, you're the bad guy. And that's complete, you know, for spiritual vision is, no, actually, we're all spiritual beings. We're all connected to Krishna. We're all connected to God. And that just competing with each other for the material resources, even you become the richest person in the world, you're not going to become happy. Krishna says you can go to the highest planet. You go to the highest planet, you'll still think what's next. Isn't it? 
like I've never done it, but I, I read here's here's sometimes people they I guess they like they like you know whatever they they like binge on their favorite TV series, right? You spend the whole weekend and watch 40 episodes of some TV show that you like, you know. And by the end of it, you can imagine like you must be so sick of that TV show, isn't it? But then the next week, it's like now what do we do now? Do something different. Do something else. So. Therefore, describe the sages who they're trying to understand. So to achieve this, we're advised that if we want to achieve this kind of pleasure from within that doesn't depend upon the ups and downs of the economy, doesn't depend upon the ups and downs of the weather, doesn't depend upon the person in the next office, if they're friendly to me today or not, doesn't depend upon if the kids appreciate dinner or not, those things all come and go, or even my health, but that we have to refocus our own activities and understand, okay, I'm already making so many sacrifices. Because if you're in the world, you have to make sacrifices. You have to. And for nothing else, even, you know, the people that are like saying, okay, I'm not going to work for anybody. Okay, well then, you know, and sometimes people in this situation are very unfortunate for reasons, mostly. But even if you think somebody completely gives up any kind of responsibility, you still got to go out in the street corner and ask, can you give me a dollar for dinner? You know, you're forced by your stomach. You're forced to go to the woods and find some berries. You're forced to do some kind of sacrifice, if nothing else. So the question is, um, if we have to do, if we have to sacrifice, we should ask ourselves, and people should be asking themselves, and we encourage people to ask, what am I getting? What's the result I'm getting? And is this really the best possible result? You know, it's described that the Greek philosopher's expression is there that <coughs> that that um, a life escaping me enough that it, uh, an unexamined life is not worth leading or living right? an unexamined life so a human form of life we're meant to examine what we're doing I, we, we stayed in a hotel not too far away here for the for the event and outside the tree there was some squirrels every morning and they were very busy I was amazed at the talents they have they can jump from branch to branch and reach and practically climb up a wall they have very sophisticated techniques far greater if I went out and tried to do what a squirrel did I'd be dead in t two minutes you know I'd, I'd leap from branch to branch I'd fall and smash my head it'd be over okay so we're not so good at leaping from tree to tree you know but what we actually have the ability to do is to ask the questions where why am I here where did I come from and okay I have to go to work tomorrow is that the best thing I'm supposed to do I'm sacrificing what result am I getting and am I getting the best result just like an intelligent person right you see that so many billboards these days whatever it is now you know bring your money here we give you 2.75 percent of course they never tell you that the inflation rate is 2.8 percent but that's another topic but you know but you're reading the it says come here to get a 2.75 percent return or you do some separate investment. We'll give you a 5% return, a 10% return, etc. So people are always calculating what's the return I'm going to get, isn't it? Or if you're if you're switching, I know these days read a lot about you know millennials. They're jumping like my generation. You got a my father's generation. You got a job out of college and you died in that position. You know my generation. People move around a little bit. You know all of you know younger people. You two years you're out the door. Like you know I'm moving up, right? So what are they moving up? They're calculating what's better. What's the best return? What's going to look good on my resume? What company haven't I done? Well, where am I going to get better training, etc.? So they're making a decision. I have to sacrifice. What's the result I'm going to What's the best result? Or if you buy a house, you're looking, okay, we have to give you a lot of money. What's the best return that I'm going to get? So Krishna says the highest return we get can't be found in the material things that we do and the things of this world. No job, no salary, no car, none of these things are going to actually completely satisfy us. But when we connect to Him, we learn to sacrifice for Him, then actually we experience a higher taste. And we all get a little experience of that. We wouldn't come here if we didn't get a little experience of that. But sometimes we get more experience of that, and sometimes we get less experience of that. You know, there's a whole theological reason for that. But the idea is that... Um, Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, Pardam Drishtvani Vartate. When we get the higher taste, then we can learn to sacrifice more. And we can give up the lower things. We give up the lower things. So, 
just like people come here and they taste prasadam and then if they're not already ve eating vegetarian food then, then slowly they become appreciative that this food is so nice there's no need to harm animals you get a higher taste or people uh, come and 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 uh, you know chant and, and experience some practice of the bhakti yoga and many of us experience all of a sudden all those other friends you have in life that have different kind of parties and then you lose your interest to go there like yeah what excuse can we give them to not come this weekend is it? Is it? I know when I was first becoming a Christian devotee, I, I started experiencing that my friends changed, you know, because I wanted to talk about some degree of spiritual concepts, you know, and I would start to ask questions at parties and some people go, wow, that's really deep, you know, let's talk about that. And other people would look at me like, are you okay? You know, or they would just like look at you and walk to the other side of the room because they didn't you know they didn't want to have people asking questions you know go to a party or something say people like what do you think the purpose of life is anyway you know and they just want to talk about the latest investment or who won the football game or something like that you know and maybe we need we need to know sometimes what's the best investment but again it's not the main thing so the conclusion of this section here is that one, we should, we should understand and also learn to try to communicate it to other people. Everybody's sacrificing. Sometimes people say, why do you guys go to the temple or the church or the mosque or the synagogue or whatever? Why do you go there? I mean, come on, look how much time you're wasting. You know, for crying out loud, it's Sunday. They play, the football season started. You know, you know what game's on this afternoon? Or do you, don't you realize there's a sale at the mall? I mean, what are you sacrificing? You know, you're, you're, you're sacrificing. So, so we are making a conscious choice. And, 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 our, and, and the point of this, the, the text here is that everybody's making some kind of sacrifice. So let's be more thoughtful. What's the result I'm getting? And let's be analytical about what are the results that other people are getting? What's the, what's the, what's the opportunity that's, that's given? And gradually, gradually, we start experiencing that this gives a greater return. This gives a greater return. It's like somebody comes, a lot of stories of people come to the Krishna temple, come to ISKCON. They don't have a whole lot of interest. They really can make it through like the program and then they serve the feast. They go, oh, okay, now I know where I came. You know, you meet sometimes people like that, whether they're Western or Indian origin or whatever. It's like, you know, I don't know really like to go, but you know, the food's really good, isn't it? And after a while, like the, not only the food's good, okay, the music's kind of good. I, you know, I, 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 okay, I'll move a little bit. As long as the food's coming, you know? And then after a while, it's like, uh, you know, it's time for the feast. Oh, I want to stay and see the deeds a little more. Or like, you know, is there something else I can do? I keep hearing about seva. What is this seva stuff? Is that another kind of halava? What is this? What is this doing service stuff? You know, how can I go deeper? How can I go deeper? And we see a similar phenomenon now. Like all across the world, America is one of the many places. So much interest in yoga. And generally, people don't go to a yoga class for the absolute truth. Not in this country, right? You know, you don't find up in front of a yoga studio, seek the absolute truth. What's it say? It says, you know, bring down your blood pressure, strengthen your heart, lose a couple pounds, loosen up, isn't it? You know, and then at the end, they give you like 15 seconds. Oh, thank you very much. See you next week. Is it? But it's a beginning. You know, it's the beginning, and people get a little bit of a taste. And after a t after a while, they start thinking, you know, who are these like strange pictures you have around here? You know, that's Ganesh. Well, who is he? I have no idea, but he he's cool, isn't he? You know, or who's that? Oh, that's Saraswati. Oh, the inner goddess of learning. Really? Why do you have a goddess of learning here? I don't know. And then they find so why goddess of learning? Because there's higher knowledge. Oh, I didn't know that. See. Why do you chant Om? Well, it says spiritual sound. What do you mean? What does that mean, spiritual? I don't know. It's like, what does it mean, spiritual? Oh, there's a divine energy, divine experience, divine person. So then they go deeper, 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 deeper. So like we see a lot of the yoga studios now, a lot of people are coming, but they say, well, I know there's something more than just the exercises. So then they want to study. 
They want to pick up a book. They want to like have kirtan. So many now devotees go to yoga studios and people have kirtans. They want to go a little deeper, a little deeper, a little deeper. So that's described here. We're making sacrifices. Let's analyze what's the result of the sacrifice. Is there something deeper, something better, something higher, something more profound? And how can I carve a little more time, maybe a little bit of my money, maybe a little bit of my interest, a little bit of my intelligence, my focus, maybe my home? How can I, I mean, this is bhakti yoga is about how do you sacrifice your home? Again, it doesn't mean you give it up. How do you, how do you transform it? How do I transform what I do with my car? How do I transform the time I spend with my family? How do I transform cooking? Some of us love to cook. Some of it's a drudgery. We can learn how to cook in a way that the cooking itself becomes spiritual activity. Most people don't know that. So, this is the beauty, the beauty that's given here. And Srila Prabhupada, uh, he's told us that if we just add, he gives examples sometimes, <clears throat> which initially sounds harsh, but then it's wonderfully expansive. He says, actually, Ranguru means heavy. Sadhu the one who cuts. So Prabhupada says sometimes, he says, the whole material world, anything, whatever you gain, it's nothing but zeros. Wow, that's pretty tough. Phew, that's not very happy. People don't sound very happy. Everything's just a bunch of zeros. Your guru is heavy. Right? But in the ultimate sense, why zeros? Because it's all lost. We're here for a short period of time, like even they say in English, you can't take it with you. Isn't it? But, Prabhupada says, you put a one in front of all those zeros. If you add spiritual knowledge, you add a spiritual purpose, you add Krishna, the Supreme Person, all those zeros become tremendously valuable. You know, you have some strength, ultimately you're going to lose it. It's a zero. You put a one in front, connected with Krishna, it becomes a spiritual asset. You have a house, ultimately, you know, you're going to lose it. You put a one in front, you put Krishna there, you spiritualize your house, and it's a, it becomes a source of joy. Not anxiety, it becomes a source of joy. So, um, I'll stop, but I just, is like a bit of an introduction. Um... Badra Purnima is coming up. We're going to see a little video about that in a minute in, in, in about a couple of weeks. And this is a special, a special day. Just like it's described here, the sages wanted to perform a sacrifice for all living beings, for their peace and prosperity. We should perform a s sacrifices, sacrifice our time, our energy, our intelligence, etc., in a way to bring us spiritual benefit. <coughs> so it's particularly noted that if we share this knowledge of the Bhagavatam on this particular day, we make some sacrifice for that. If we make sure we have these beautiful sources of knowledge in our home, if we uh, have it, we purchase it to give them to other people, or if we, if we just sponsor to give other people, there's a very, very special benefit that comes to us, it's accrued to us. So. I'm going to just take a minute and ask for a couple questions, and then after that we'll show this video. Okay, is that good? So, and it's described that if we, just like the sages, they were performing this sacrifice for everybody's peace and prosperity, but they're also actually experiencing the highest level of satisfaction within. So that's what we're seeking. And if we experience that, it doesn't matter what goes on outside. Krishna says, Mantra Sparsas Tukunte Asitos Na Sukhudukuda. Happiness, distress are there. And it's described in the Bhagavatam. The same way distress comes, even if you don't want it, happiness comes. Isn't it? Sometimes you wake up, it's just a beautiful day, you just feel great. Right? The boss comes in, you know, he, some, sometimes you, you get a letter in the mail, says, sorry, we miscalculated, but you have an extra thousand dollars coming back from last year's taxes. Wow, that's pretty nice. You feel really happy. You know, but then another time you get a letter, sorry we miscalculated, you owe six hundred dollars. <laughs> right? So the good you know, the bad news comes, the good news they both come and we really can't do a whole lot about it. Um, you know, we have some effect, but a lot of things that come to us are from our past karma and all that. So whatever situation we have, the ups and downs are gonna come, but connect with Krishna. Don't let the up be a reason to disconnect. Don't let the down be a reason to disconnect, but use whatever opportunity to keep putting that one in front of the zeros, and then we are the most fortunate people in the world, actually. So any questions or comments, then we'll show this little video about the holiday coming up. 
Anything at all? It's not a Bollywood film or anything, so you can take a few minutes to ask a question. You're not missing that much by, by the delay in the, in the film here. <laughs> okay, ladies first. Oh, good, thank you. You always ask nice questions, I remember. That's good. You should always come when I have a class. If nobody else asks, I can always. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, um, how do we motivate somebody that is very lazy? How do we motivate? Somebody that is very lazy. Somebody that's very? Lazy. Lazy. Same way I've been motivating myself for so many years. Well, we know there's different modes of nature, right? So when somebody doesn't have so much ambition or drive or enthusiasm, sometimes they're influenced by the mode of tamas, ignorance. So, but that's not the soul. It's described just like when air is pure, when it goes over a garden, it, like a rose or a flower garden, it picks up the beautiful smells, right? You see, Oh, what beautiful air. If it goes over some dirty place, it picks up the, the dirty smell. So the same way, our consciousness is reflected by the things around us. So one very important thing is to associate, ourselves associate with other people, associate, hear stories about, be with people that are active for a good purpose. That's one thing. Second thing is a lot of people feel lazy because they're not motivated for anything that's worthwhile. You know, I think back like when Prabhupada first came to America, there was this whole generation of hippies. They weren't really lazy. They just saw the uselessness of everything that they were told they should do. So they became lazy for that. But when many of them actually understood, oh, I have an opportunity for spiritual awakening, they became the most active people. So one thing is association. Um, the other is ourselves set a good example and another is to help people get a higher taste if somebody gets a real pleasure out of what they're doing Prabhupada said if we're Krishna conscious or if we understood the importance of our opportunity we'd run from like seva to seva to seva to opportunity we wouldn't waste a moment because we realize I have so little time and there's such an opportunity so if someone realizes the opportunity they really understand the opportunity then they'll take advantage of that. So it's just a few thoughts. Okay? And you can pray. If it's someone you really love, you can pray for them. You can pray for anybody, of course. And also, sometimes, you know, the material energy works its ways too. Let's say they have this expression, tough love. Sometimes if your kids are really troubled, they have tough love. So Maya, she's tough love. So the kicking is there too. But we'd rather not see people get kicked. If possible. Yes. So there are different ways of getting towards God. One of the ways you spend time in temple, chanting. Other is good deeds. You do yes. good deeds like, good you know, deeds. Okay. You don't harm anybody, you don't say bad mm -hmm. words about it. Which one is, you would say, somebody who is spending a lot of time mm -hmm. at doing religious activities or somebody who is honest within conducting their life? Mm. What was the end of it? Or somebody who is honest? They are very like, honest okay. and it's not that I'm spending time or hours yeah. chanting name of Krishna. So the end, of your, the end of your question is kind of like, what's better, to be a person doing religious things or an honest person? I don't know if I would I say those say have <laughs> to be opposite. Hopefully, hopefully those aren't, aren't opposite. But I understand, I understand your question. So, <clears throat> in the Gita, our, that's a very deep question actually. In the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna started out arguing with Krishna, I have to be a good person. You know, I, I don't want to fight this war because my family's on the other side. The women won't be protected. That means there's going to be bad progeny. Everything's going to, the whole world's finished if I do this. Um, 
But Krishna ultimately, then so Krishna went through the whole thing with him. He explained, okay, one, you're going to be active no matter what. You can't get out of this. You're you're an active person. You're a warrior. You're going to fight one way or the other. Then he talked about how you should do this duty, but don't be detached. You're going to have to fight, so but don't be detached. And then he began talking about the different processes of yoga, by which you can purify your mind and gradually purify your consciousness. He goes through the whole analysis of the material energy and the modes of nature. Talks about what happens at the time of death, all the way through, and then at the 18th chapter, and it's there in other places too, but he culminates the 18th chapter, he says, actually, give all of this up to surrender me. Because ultimately, you're my eternal devotee. You're in this forgetful, temporary world. You're like in an ocean. You're being tossed around by the waves. Sometimes the boat comes up, sometimes it sinks. Ultimately, it's not your home. So surrender to me, connect with me, and you can get out of here. This and be eternally happy. That's the ultimate instruction. <coughs> At the same time, Prabhupada mentions in his purport, he says, because Arjuna was distraught at the nature of this horrible battle, because his heart was filled with compassion, Prabhupada says he was qualified to understand the message of the Gita. So, and it describes elsewhere, 7th chapter, 728, I think that if one has in some degree of piety, honesty, you know, these pious things, the message doesn't sink in. But the different things you're describing, that we should, okay, be a good person, perform your duty, be honest, you know, like that. Those are very good things, but they won't end the cycle of birth and death. So sometimes those are described as like sub-religious principles. It's like you can build a house, you need a good foundation. If you have a good foundation, you can build the rest of the house. So, again, it's a deeper question, but part of the answer is, those other things are good, but they're not sufficient. And in a similar way, if one tries to be Krishna conscious, but like Prabhupada mentions many times, you, you, we, we come to the mode of goodness, and from there we can become Krishna conscious. They, you know, they, then you come to the pure goodness terminology. And I've heard explain one sannyasi gave a nice explanation. He said, just like if you want to fly from here to Los Angeles, you have to first go to the airport. Then you get on the plane. Right? So he's describing that the airport's like the mode of goodness. You go to the mode of goodness, you can make the connection with the airplane, you can go to Krishna. So, um, but if you just go to the airport and you stay there, you're still in Chicago. You know? So coming to, the, coming to these like pious things is very good because it gives us impetus and opportunity to take up direct spiritual life. Having said that, because it's Kali Yuga and conditions are so bad, you know, it's revealed in the Shastra, Lord Chaitanya personally comes and he sends his great empowered representatives who personally go out and go approach the most sinful people in the world and say, just chant Hare Krishna. Just to take some prasadam. Doesn't matter, you can be the most fallen person in the world. Give a dollar, take a book. You know, eat this, you know, eat this prasadam, take this mantra. And people become purified. So the, because the age is so difficult, the process becomes easier and easier and easier. So, so if you say which is better, um, we should take up bhakti. But those other things are also good in helping us come towards bhakti. And if we're practicing bhakti, we can't think, well, I'm a devotee, therefore I can be dishonest. That's like completely confused. Is that okay? Okay, so do both. Okay? Okay. Yes, Prabhu. Premananda, are we okay on time? Okay. Okay, good. Hare Last one, then uh, we'll show the video. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Uh, I was trying to understand the difference between uh, obligation and sacrifice. When you mentioned the example of going to work, m getting up on Monday, mm -hmm. for me, I understand it more as an obligation because I'm forced, my nature is something, but I'm forced to go to the work. I'm obliged to go to the work. So for me, the understanding of sacrifice is that it has to be, uh, if I'm sacrificing something, I need to truly understand the meaning and the purpose for which I'm doing something I'm, and leaving out the other activity. But uh, in a spiritual context, to get the full effect of the sacrifice, it needs to be a conscious thing. But, but in the broader definition, 
to sacrifice, you're giving up one thing, you're sacrificing one thing, you're giving up one thing for a different thing. So you're sacrificing your, your peace of mind on Monday morning to get the paycheck on, on Friday. Okay? You're sacrificing 20, 30, 50 percent of your paycheck to have a government that takes care of most of our needs. So we're giving it up. Now we may not, we may be unwilling, we may be unconscious of it, but we're doing it whether we know it or not. So in that way we're, we're giving up something or we're sacrificing something for something else. So, but in a spiritual sacrifice, yes, the more conscious we are, the more effect it's going to have. So, for instance, we can come to the Sunday feast and somebody gives you a plate of prasadam and you just like, you know, pour it in your mouth or something like that. Or you can, you can be meditating. This is actually sanctified food. This was offered to Krishna. This was cooked with devotion. It was offered by very saintly people in the mood of devotion to the Lord. The Lord's accepted this, described he's actually tasted this, and that actually pure devotees, they taste Krishna when they're taking prasadam, you know, and that's such mercy. And then you take it in that mood of understanding, that awareness, more benefit is there. So the same way, <coughs> if, you know, when we, anybody in chants Hare Krishna, that's like sacrifice, okay? It's something done for the benefit of the Lord. He, he accepts it like that. But the more conscious we are of it, the more aware of it, as you described me, the deeper the benefit, the deeper the effect. So like same thing. So people go to work on Monday morning. They may not be thinking of in terms of a sacrifice, but actually they have so many hours of the day, they're giving one third of their life to go to that job. That's a big sacrifice. So the question is, what are you getting out of it? At the end of life, what do you get? You know, when you die, you know, the, does the boss come out and, you know, make sure you get some eternal benefit? Or they just, you know, they put up a plaque, you know, he was working at this office, you know. If you're really good, maybe they'll have a moment of silence before lunch at the office, you know. They'll mention you in the monthly port. So-and-so worked here for 35 years, and we really miss him. And, the, the you know, the office uh, soccer game will be a start one hour later next week. Any questions? Isn't it? So thoughtful people think, what am I getting out of this? You know, what's the, what, is there any better benefit? So that's why our, our sacrifice should be thoughtful. Where can I put my time? Where can I put my energy to get the, the, a better? Or, or we, would just, we would say, hey, tested, there's even a, a maximum, the best. Like when Prabhupada gave me the name Anuttamadas, there's different interpretations, but one is that the, the highest. So servant of the highest. So I like that name. Because I had some sense of searching. Is there anything higher? Is there anything higher? Is there anything higher? You know, so like, yeah, this is the highest. Okay, I try to serve the highest goal. So try to sacrifice for the highest goal. And we can tell, you know, in a gentle way, we encourage people. What are you really getting out of this? We have to be gentle when we present that. But that's the question. You know, what are you really getting out of this? You know, somebody tell you, I hate this job. Well, you know, maybe you should think about Maybe, maybe you should think about that a little bit. Okay. So now we're going to watch this nice video. Do you want to introduce it or say anything about it? Or again, this is back to this budget of Purnima. And if you sacrifice a few minutes to watch this, then you enjoy the benefit of prasadam in a few minutes. And you're also going to get a great advice about how we can make a little extra spiritual advance from this very sacred time. Okay. Hare Krishna. So we will have us, we'll all take a look at a small video, watch a small video, which says about exactly, uh, Mataji asked a question that do we have to be always in the temple? Is that what considered spiritual? Um, so now we will watch a video and see what are the other ways to actually bring spiritual life into our lives at homes. So. She says it's a three minute video. Bhagavatam, 
the golden throne and gave this to the guest. He will attain the supreme constant destination. Roger Ponina was part of an even bigger project called Go Matsya. Matsya, of course, is the Lord's incarnation who saved the babies, keeping them up on the boat. We also, through Go Matsya, intend to help save the natives through mass distribution and education. People all over the world will take advantage of this great benediction given in Sanskrit to give away a whole set of Srimad Bhagavatam to a friend, to a relative, or to somebody who they've never met. So the Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, is the right of food of Vedic knowledge, and it was compiled by Vyasa in the prime of the Victoria. But this is a very good advice how we can make space with Mahatma. Srila Prabhupada brought with him to America Srimad Bhagavatam said. His main goal was to make sure that this vibration got out to the whole world. Now's a chance to make that happen. Imagine what a benediction to be connected to Srila Prabhupada's core mission to distribute Srimad Bhagavatam. It's a rare opportunity. You can donate on someone else's behalf. You can buy the books yourself and give them away, or you can give the money to your local Madra campaign project, and they'll distribute the books for you on that special day. Please join us for this incredible initiative to spread Shiva Conference, translations and reports of Shiva Bhagavatam all over the world, and get benediction to everybody and new spiritualized society. Please take advantage on this very nice proposal. This is a wonderful opportunity to make greater advancements. It's a great to go back to Monday. Mm. Thank you. Hare Krishna. This five minutes we want to share more information. Please. Um, so you know now why you know you must have seen the thrones out there. So they are the thrones for the Bhagavatam. Um, they are not really gold, but they have the gold plating. And we are going to celebrate. I mean, the Bada Purnima is uh, coming on 24th of this month. It's on Monday, so we'll have a celebration on the Monday evening. Um, so last year we did we did Arati to Arati to Bhagavatam and then gifting and then prasadam. The same will be followed this year as well. So um, to just let you know uh, what a little bit more about this, you know, many of us may not be aware what is Bhagavatam or what is this Badra Purnima celebration is about. So going back, we start with you know, this verse, the quote says that whoever gives a set of Bhagavatam, there is this set here on the chair. It is comes in 18 books. Uh, it is written by Vyas Dev after writing all of the Vedas. So whoever gives that Bhagavatam on this throne, the supreme transformation destination is guaranteed. So now comes the point, what is the supreme transcendental destination? Right? So we don't know, but at least minimally, Krishna says that in Bhagavad Gita that it doesn't need sunlight, moon, or electricity. It's quite inconceivable, isn't it? We cannot imagine without sunlight, moon, or electricity. But that's what Krishna says. Uh, furthermore, Lord Brahma also gives the explanation and uh, describes the spiritual world to Devatas, as exactly mentioned in the Bhagavata, uh, through the experience of his sons. Most of you know. Uh, yeah, his, his four sons called K four Kumaras or Brahma Kumaris, they always look young as they pictured here. So somehow they ended up in Vaikuntha. And then Brahma explains that the place is very special. It is filled with very, very auspicious trees and forests, and which also include desire trees. And people there are so happy. And also they were also having airplanes, flying on the airplanes made of gold and lapis lazuli and all that. And furthermore, even people look so beautiful, uh, so much so that 
you know what they will do is they try to uh, polish the marble walls there to please the Lord Lord and and like every step is a uh, dance and every word is like a song so that's a kind of uh, Brahma explains about the transcendental destination here's the picture which depicts most of it there is an airplane there in the top uh, here and it's also mentioned in this verse is there is no dead thing there everything has a life and everything has a p is a person even airplanes also have life there so there's a some description is there in the Bhagavad Purana. Um, now will I, I let my wife share some more. So how easy is it to go or attain the destination? Like um, again, we we all know the process. A B C D. Associate, chant, and study scriptures, and then we try to follow a spiritual diet. But when you see how practical is this to just always stay in the temple and do it. So it's uh, what we can do is we can bring the temple to our home. At least, you know, once or twice a week we come to the temple. But rest of the time when we are not able to come to the temple because of work or something, you can carry Krishna with you even to your work. So that convenient Krishna has made himself available in uh, li literally incarnation, Srimad Bhagavatam. So we, w we come to know that we need additional help. So this is the highlight and with this we will end here. When we see this uh, verse, the verse is from the last canto of Bhagavatam. And if on the full moon day of the month of Bhadra, one places Srimad Bhagavatam on a golden throne and gives it as a gift, he will attain the supreme transcendental destination. Again, we are just wrapping up. So. You can gift yourself, you can gift it to others, you can have one set per room, if you have a four bedroom <laughs> house. You know, it's, it's important because what do you, we, we can't do too much vastu and everything when we are here. So you just get a set of Bhagavatam and keep. You're spiritually, your vastu works out great. <laughs> so, so this is uh, our humble appeal. Um, we have Badra Purma celebrations like Vamsadari Prabhu shared that please sign up, please take one set. If you already have one, like I said, you can have your personal one. You can share it with the others and give it off as a gift. Yeah. So, he is mentioned as a campaign, but it's not a campaign. We want to let you know the opportunity. And, you know, we ask you to sign up and we'll make the, you know, sets available on 24th. And we also listed the benefits of it. In short, it helps the spiritual values, attract good fortune. It's also a way of saving the Vedic knowledge. It's the essence of all the Vedas. And uh, especially it really enriches loving relationships. It's very powerful. So uh, if any of you are interested, please see us downstairs at the book table. And we will take your name. And it costs $250 for the set. But we have flexible finance options. So, just sharing with you all. Thank you all so much for your attention. Hare Krishna. <coughs> How many of you have seen uh, this flyer? Can I see a show of hands? Anybody here? Okay. Can uh, Anybody here do not know what this is? How many of you do not know what this is? Two, three people. Okay, for your sake, you can pick up one of these flyers before you go. Um, this is a wonderful cultural program called Viva Cultura. Um, His Holiness Indradyumna Swami Maharaj, one of the senior disciples of uh, His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada, who has been traveling, preaching, um, performing these cultural programs for over 20 years. He, along with his uh, team of devotees, about uh, 50 of them. They are traveling right across this country as we speak and we had the good fortune of inviting them over here. They will be here in Metia Valley High School performing 22nd of this month. Can I see a show of hands of those who have gone and uh, um, reserved your seats? Okay. Um, 
for those of you who do not know how to reserve how to do that is you go to iskarnaperville.org website and uh, uh, there there is this this flyer you will see it will have all the descriptions everything and you can um, reserve your seats this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity he's going to show you a little uh, video clip on that very short one um, and this opportunity won't come back again so make the best use of it we are doing our level best to promote this program it's amazing and uh, please inform all your friends in your network your uh, whatsapp group and all that you yourself please go and register and uh, make use of this avail uh, uh, you know available make use of this uh, opportunity It's while a two-hour program. While it's coming up, I'll just mention I went to their, they did a program last year. It was absolutely astounding. And I know they did it at a university. The president of the university came to attend the program and some of the other people. So I would strongly recommend you try to go. It's, it's really a beautiful show. And it's also a wonderful thing to invite some friends that don't know much about our culture to come and experience. you can contact Shyam Prabhu if uh, you need any help he is available for this you want this so um, there are, you saw the artist uh, there are uh, 50 of them from 16 different countries starting from Poland and there are many other countries this complete united nation coming and performing for us and the theme is Ramayan so the kids uh, you know um, loves this and this is very much targeted for all ages but for kids it's wonderful wonderful we always sometimes you know feel shy about bringing our westerner friends and others oh you know this is not our kind of program right here you go you have everything in this so uh, and uh, you know these are uh, very high quality high performance program and anyway if you need help information please contact me Risa, Sagun, they all will be sitting outside. They will be taking your names. And I really need every one of you. I, I, you are my guest. Please come, participate. No bar, no carry. How, however you want, I will help you to come and join us. We will have Prasadam that day. We will have wonderful. I know you all have worked so hard in many events. And come and relax with us. Thank you. How much are the tickets? $50. Okay. If you Prasadam go to Hamilton, is anybody's heard about Hamilton, you go to New York, you want to see Hamilton, tickets start about 300 up to 500 and even more. And that won't help you make spiritual progress. Yeah. This yeah. actually, I can say it's a beautiful, beautiful event. You should, you should definitely try to go. Prasadam is included in the ticket price, actually. Which is worth the $50 right there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, today's Sunday Feast is sponsored by Dr. Brahm Gupta. Um, seeking Krishna's blessings. Uh, please um, pray after me. Chant the holy names. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama, Rama. Rama, Rama. Rama, Rama. Hare, Hare Hare. And the last part of today's uh, announcement, I'm going to give the mic to Sumangala Mataji. She is uh, doing a little recognition program here for the fantastic uh, Janmashtami celebration we had. Just uh, bear with her for a few minutes here. Thank you so much.
Um, thank you for being here. Uh, first, I would like to question first. How many people were here for Janmashtami festival? Wow, that's good. Let's give a big hurry ball if you like the program. Janmashtami festival, we had in the Naperville history for the first time in the history. First of all, we did the two day event. You can imagine two day event. Each and every team lead and the volunteers literally, I don't know whether they had their lunch, dinner or anything, I don't know. So much of hard work for two day festival. Let's give them a big hurry ball. Now, coming to the numbers, right? So we did the hard work, okay. You know, we have been planning this from two months or three months. The initial plan started four months before, but the actual implementation, two months. Every single day they are working on something, dealing with the people, phone calls, designing, contacting the vendors, lot of stuff. We'll see that now. But we did so much of hard work. Let's see the numbers. How many people came? Do you want to hear the numbers? 5,500 visitors for the temple. <laughs> Big horrible. First time in the history of Naperwell here. Our congregation is small, but still we pulled out the marketing team, everybody. I want to see, I know it's 5 to 7, uh, seven but please, just bear 10 minutes, we won't take much time. But I want to see, like, you know, how many people are involved in this, what they did. Just like in 5 minutes, we are going to wrap up. So I want to do a little recognition. And, uh, you know, His Grace uh, Anuttama Prabhu is here. I'm super excited. Our team leads are excited to get the gifts from Anuttama Prabhu. <laughs> okay, le first uh, I would like to call upon Chandramukhi Mataji. <laughs> Mataji was leading DT Worship Department. Along with her, there were Krishna Murari Prabhu and Dhananjay Prabhu. Let's give a big hurry ball to Krishna Murari Prabhu and Dhananjay Prabhu. The Abhishekam that you have seen, 100 colors filled up. The Yagna that you have seen on, you know, and uh, initiation day. Everything that you are seeing, everything seems seamless, but that was the planning. She was the one who was coordinating with the DT department and whole planning, how the altar, everybody, you know, artists are happening. Priests are available when we did the archanas and everything. So, thank you so much, Mataji, and for your team. Uh, next, I would like to call upon Abhay Prabhu. Uh, he has a very special role. Everybody was enjoying the festival here. Didn't you guys enjoy the festival? Yes. yes. But what was his team doing? All of them outside. Can you imagine when I walked into Janmashtami festival at 4 o'clock? He didn't even have an umbrella. He was literally, you know, in the rain, standing in the rain. Not only him. His entire team. Would you like to just list your team? Thank you so much, Ravi Prabhu. I approached him at the last moment and he always said yes. Thank you so much. Um, one of my close friends, Ramdas, is always there with me. I would like to recognize him as well. Uh, he is not here today, but his family is there. Thank you so much for supporting him. Uh, two of my other friends, uh, Chitrarth and Shailendra, they are also there always with me. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, Mataji, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. They were the people who were controlling the crowd. You don't know, when one person drives in, he is in his own mood, why cannot I go inside? Like, you know, they were like, you know, cops were not there. So it was like a battle at the gate, you know. You know, so thank you so much, Prabhu and team. Uh, next, I would like to call upon Mahati uh, Mataji. And uh, on behalf of uh, Mahati, is, they were doing the decorations, myself, Mahati Kirti Mataji and Janaki Mataji. So the whole temple decorations that you see, that was done by her and her team. She made changes 
she spent five days. She made the decorations three times. She removed it and again she put it. So, so much of hard work. <laughs> Janaki Mataji is not here. While everyone is going on the three days, all their team, the whole entire team, they were only in that room, fully occupied, just making the garlands. You have seen the garlands on DT's very beautiful garlands. Uh, she is not here, but uh, her team made excellent. Uh, we are just doing the team leads, not the team members. You know why? Because we have 100 volunteers. If I start here, it will go till next one hour. So we are doing a phase two. This is phase one recognition. Phase two is to recognize all the volunteers. We are arranging a picnic next week. So if you are part of the volunteers team or if you are part of the congregation, communication will come, but there is going to be a picnic and we will be recognizing the team there. Next, a very important team, very, very important team. Everybody is important, but this team, uh, you know, it deals with the stomach. So, Katamrita Mataji, please, I would like to call upon Katamrita Mataji. Okay, this team I cannot speak, really, you know, because their team, uh, team members, the tents, the preparation, oh my God, Mataji. Hare Krishna, I cannot say anything, but it's a team effort, and without the team, we could not have established what we did, or accomplished what we achieved. And again, it's Radha Madhav and Radha Shamsundar's mercy, which I could see flowing like river, ocean, you name it. Hari Bol. Okay. The cooking time, it's not ends there. Do you want to hear the numbers, how much we... You guys want to hear? Yes. $8,000 they made on that day. That's a big number. That is in terms of money. But you know what is the biggest, more bigger than that, which doesn't have a tag on it? I have taken the feedback, like, you know, I didn't go ask them, okay, how was your, uh, you know, did you like the food? People came up to me, even the people whom friends and everybody, they said, Prasadam was excellent. Like, multiple, not one or two people, like, you know, multiple people, they complimented about the food that was provided. It is not just the food. Prashadam. Everybody were happy to buy the Prashadam. Thank you so much, Mataji. Uh, next, uh, cleanup team. Vrindavandas Prabhu is here. Uh, I would like to call upon. Everybody left nicely at 12 o'clock. You know, the team stayed till how long? 2.30 a.m. Those were the last people to leave. Last people to leave. They didn't have the volunteers, enough volunteers, but still they stretched. You know, the people who signed up did not show up on time, but still, no complaints. He had a smile all the time on his face. And so many devotees in his team. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. And Krishna Padilla Prabhu, next, is the setup team. Is he here? That's uh, Krishna Padilla Prabhu's mother. Please, ma'am. It was raining. Still, they came and set up the tents. It was raining, still they removed the tents. It was raining, still they cleaned up the whole parking lot and everything. Went and bought all the way, they went to Arlington Heights on the same day because the rental people forgot something, but no complaints. He loaded everything in his car, he loaded about more than 2,000 pounds of weight and he drew himself. So a big hurry bowl to Krishna Padilla Prabhu. Um, serving team is uh, Tyagi Prabhu, Prashant Tyagi Prabhu is here. Okay. But their team stood up all night, you know, at 1 o'clock served Prashadam 
and even the sunday also more than like you know almost 1000 people were served so it was a huge serving and big planning a big team so let's give a big hand to tagi prabhu team um next uh, cooking the prashadam shamla mata ji she is not here but everyone you know the size of the kitchen everybody knows it was a small kitchen but everybody was amazed to hear we cooked thousand people feast in that kitchen and you walk in any time into that kitchen i didn't feel that it was cooking for thousand people in fact i went and complimented it doesn't look like only 50 people you know even 20 people cooking that's how it was organized very clean but mata ji is not here they cooked for 1500 people prashadam let's 1500 that's not easy task N not at all an easy task and the procuring team the prashadam you know all the boga it was madhukar uh, prabhu and uh, shrikant prabhu's team and also smita patel she sponsored the boga i don't know if anybody is here but they did a lot of effort here shrikant madhukar shrikant but you could take on his behalf prabhu okay next uh, fundraising wow they did so much of every week standing here for 3 ma two months before they started you all remember right sham prabhu holding the you know kalash 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 and sangeeta mata ji with all they did a very 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 terrific job i would like to call upon sangeeta mata ji and sham prabhu both of them please speak few words In, fa in fact, our job is in your hand. Your generosity makes our life very easy. <laughs> and when you are not generous, then it gets very complicated, right? So we tried our best. Again, um, uh, fundraising is is not a time event. Um, it's it's the relationship that we build through fundraising is what matters. Like we call more friend raising, and with that we get some fun. So Sangeeta Kapoor Mata Ji and her team. She worked so hard few days in advance to prepare all the bhogas and the plates and flowers. So there's so many things went behind that. And then always we have been sweating because Kalas is coming from India. We have never seen that. We don't know how it will cross three borders. And we have promised everybody that we'll give you Kalas. So all those anxiety we lived it. But oh, I, at the end of the day, I think we consider highly successful. Again, our deities, Radha Shyamsundar, so they are so merciful. They always. does more than what we want they always help us and with that i let sangeeta kapoor mata ji speak a little bit hari krishna i think with everybody's support and with krishna's mercy we did have a very successful event and we hope to continue to keep getting your support and uh, on that day you know like prabhu said there are a lot of people who worked so hard and uh, on the day of janmashtami i think we had uh, lot of people helping us on the table even though before that lot of people had been putting things together but on that day we had uh, riddhi mata ji surekha mata ji reena mata ji prabhu sham prabhu and uh, surina so we definitely want to thank them from our heart you want to hear the numbers hari bol 75 kalash that was the biggest number ever we had 80 80 boga plates 80 boga plates we introduced that option this year 70 arti archana plates and 5 12 midnight arti plates they are feeding all the team you know biggest uh, team you know thank you so much mother ji next is uh, i would like to call upon banita and uh, saumya mata ji these people were so helpful in mitigating the entire the big tent that you are seeing in the you know so much of crowd just i can give one example the costume parade 
we had 100 participants 100 participants but they were able to manage art contest we had about 40 participants for the art contest about 15 performances with 15 different teams you know outside organizations each team consisting of about 10 participants preparing the certificates coordinating with them their music how to play mp3 you know working with their schedule you know everything they put a lot of hard work and everything without a delay not even a five minutes delay she was able to get the people on time to the stage thank you so much let's be a big hurry boy okay now we got this number 5000 i have to wonder was this an authentic Hari krishna program that everything was five minutes on time I'm starting to have doubts. <laughs> okay. Next is, we got this number, right? Huge number. 5,500 people. But who is behind that? You know, the greatest team. The marketing team. Uh, Prat uh, Pratibahu Prabhu. I would like to call upon Pratibahu Prabhu. Lot of members in that team, uh, you know, Facebook, sending out the communications, checking out. And uh, in this team, I would like to also mention Shatrupa Mataji's team at the Patel Brothers and Kirti Prabhu team. They did a really great hard work. Every visitor to the Patel Brothers, they got a flyer. And our uh, WhatsApp groups, WhatsApp groups, it was a terrific uh, communication. I would, if Kirti Prabhu is here, uh, maybe, you know, uh, please see him and congratulate him and uh, Pratibahu Prabhu, the whole uh, secret behind this success. Then uh, I have uh, welcome team, Vishaka Mataji. She is not here, okay. They were so helpful getting us the data all day from 9 a.m. till 9 p.m. there was a team member here now not all of us like you know one team maybe started at 4 o'clock one team maybe started at 12 but their team all the way 9 to 9 and the next day 9 till midnight 1 a.m. so let's give a big hurry to them um, the volunteers uh, I spoke to Sanjay Prabhu, they are uh, out of town, but uh, he was the one, he was the one who left at the 2.30 a.m. On that day, he was the last person to go. Tremendously working out. When we arranged this festival, everybody asked me, okay, you are imagining this festival big. How are we going to manage? I told answer to all the team leads only one thing. You don't worry about the volunteers. Tell me how many people you want. And uh, my secret magic weapon was... Sanjay Patel Prabhu, he was the one who was getting all the volunteers, making the calls to everybody, please come and do this. So, if you see him, please thank him. He did a, such a good, terrific work. And uh, we have two more. I'm almost done. I'm taking up time. Sorry, but it is worth to give this 10 minutes for the tons of hard work. Okay, next is uh, kids team. Have anybody seen how busy was the kids' tents? Where is Lalita Mataji? Please come. <laughs> this tent was the main attraction. All the time busy. This particular tent, usually we don't make money in that. But this time, we just with the face painting and the henna, they raised about $300. Just to tell you how much planning she did, the kids' arts work, we had about 15 different artworks to just come up with this list, me and uh, myself and her, we discussed it 10 times. We might have spent more than 15 hours just to come up with this list. That much of hard work she had put in there. Thank you, uh, Smangla Mataji, for giving this opportunity to serve for Radha Shamsundar. And uh, I would like to thank everyone who contributed for uh, um, uh, making this event successful uh, kids tent and uh, i would like th to thank revati mataji 
uh, for her continuous help uh, even though she has back pain and hetal mata ji she supported me a lot in uh, planning everything and mamta mata ji she helped in the games thing and uh, kirti prabhu mahati mata ji were all the way back uh, behind me for helping all these things and chandramukhi mata ji thanks for uh, giving me some ideas so kalpa mata ji uh, vidya mata ji so saumya mata ji so everyone helped me a lot uh, so i ate their brain <laughs> almost every day <laughs> so and danilesh prabhu kunal prabhu uh, sureka mata ji daughter priyanka uh, neena mata ji uh, nikita mata ji and all the mata ji who uh, from our community members helped Uh, in volunteering uh, these services and julia mata ji thanks for your help on that day so i uh, i really appreciate all your services for the kids team thank you so much this will be the main attraction for the next festival people will come we don't have to do anything just say these are the kids activities our marketing is done thank you lalita mata ji kiran tyagi mata ji handled the special guest uh, you know coordination she is not here but uh, she did a wonderful job there and uh, then uh, we have another team um, who is always in the background that's the finance team stoka krishna prabhu and reena mata ji please come up on she is always with the bills and checks bills and checks so you know one time you know thank you so much mata ji i better give her this one right because our bills need to be released okay uh, na least not but the least you know last one uh, kirti prabhu and team i would like to call upon uh, sureka mata ji they did the brixel this is the campaign that we did vitala program in a very short time in a week of time we had put this together and uh, they worked uh, okay that's a signal that i have to stop now right <laughs> okay they worked very nicely in uh, just 4 5 days and we could not spend much time because everybody was busy but only on the janmashtami day we worked numbers right we sold 10 bricks for this campaign the 1000 dollars thank you so much mata ji okay final i'm done the this whole project you know there is one person right who is tapping everybody you know we want to know the tapping person chandra mata ji please come up she was the project manager for this entire thing you know so checking out with everybody are you done with the task are you done with the task you know thank you so much there are phase 2 is there where we need to recognize each and every volunteer but 100 people list we don't want to do it here but uh, no that's all uh, mata ji's mercy thank you so much um i think it is uh, my duty and responsibility to give a ton of credit to sumangala mata ji because uh, it's not an easy job managing this type of a program you are not in the good books of anybody you <laughs> she gets bombarded quite a bit she stands up she has a lot of energy and uh, determination by which she keeps going and uh, ultimately in the end uh, she is doing it for service to their lordship shri shri radha madhava and radha shyamasundar and shrila prabhupad and so we are very very grateful to have her here and uh, thank her for her wonderful service thank you so much and uh, and i don't think uh, she could do anything without her amazing husband <laughs> krishna prema prabhu i think i should say many times i just simply send her to him <laughs> because you know he's the ultimate 
responsible person behind her. <laughs> and so you can all go to him if there is any. <laughs> so anything else uh, for today? Yeah, very quick. Please support next year. Next year, I want to double the number. So, because you know, we have this sale, right? Buy one, get one. So, I want to double it up. So, let's target 10,000 or 15,000, but that will happen only with your support. Uh, not only the number, but we need to serve them well. Last one. Next week, we are having Radhashtami festival here. So, please do come and take the blessings of Radhashtami. Thank you so much. Just one more quick thing. We have our Pujari team, all the second initiated devotees, I will say, starting with uh, our Balaram Prasad Prabhu, give a big Hari Bol, <laughs> Mohan Leela Prabhu, Mohan Leela Prabhu, Premakishwari Madhaji, Vamshidhari Prabhu, Shatrupa Madhaji, Dhananjaya Pandit, and uh, our um, Radha Kunja Bihari Prabhu and uh, uh, Chandra Mukhi Mataji, who were like a full strong support for everything that we did, Abhishek and everything else. Please give them a big hand. Thank you. The book distribution team. So I'm giving the books back to the book distribution team. <laughs> <laughs> give it to each other. Prasadam is served downstairs. Radhashtami is next week. So please be here.